Today our virtual bus tour takes to the road in the Isis district where cane growers are delivering environmental outcomes through innovations in soil health and nutrient application. This is the Farnsfield farm of Peter Russo and his sons Chris and Jeremy where fallow crops are boosting soil nitrogen organically. It's harvest season, peanut harvest that is, and with rain on the way there's a race on to get this legume fallow crop out of the ground and on its way to market. If the ripening crop gets a drenching while still in the ground, there is a high risk of disease. So we just had a little scud come across, um, we're just trying to work out, we've got four hectares of peanuts on top of the ground at the moment ready to thrash. So this crop's about halfway through, maybe just a little bit more. So that is some decent peanuts on there, that's for sure. If we got a week of constant rain, we'd start to see some rust and things like that on the leaves, leaf spot. Um, once the disease is in these things, it's pretty hard to um, to get rid of it. You slow it down, but you can't you can't stop it. We're, we've been really lucky this year. We've had good rain, but we've had good heat um, after it, so it's it's kept the bush really healthy. Thankfully, the heavy rain stays away just long enough to harvest a neighbouring block where the peanuts were dug a few days earlier and left in the sun to dry. A thrasher separates the nuts from the remaining biomass, which then goes back into the block as trash or mulch to enrich the soil. The nuts are loaded onto a truck destined for Australia's peanut capital of Kingaroy. With 400 hectares of cane land in rotation and about 100 hectares under peanuts, this is legume fallow cropping on a large scale. I love growing peanuts. Um, I see the value in what they give back to our cane um, and it's another income source. When the cane's down a little bit, uh, the price of sugar's down, we've, we've still potentially got something with the peanuts. It's the biomass of the crop. Um, the fact that it's a, it's a nitrogen fixer, so it's working the whole time it's there. Determined to create a viable future in farming for his sons, Peter Russo started growing legume crops more than a decade ago while farming in partnership with his brothers. We were growing soybeans originally and then um, looked to peanuts for a better, better crop, probably to make, make a bit of money out of it if we could, but also I found that peanuts were a great rotation crop with sugarcane and then we found that if you went in with peanuts you could renovate the soil actually and uh, save on fertiliser but the ameliorants you put into the crop actually help grow a good crop of peanuts and then help the cane cycle afterwards so it was a it's a win-win virtually. In addition to fixing nitrogen in the soil the lime and gypsum used to establish the legume crop also helps condition the soil for the cane growing cycle. Timing is crucial Peanuts planted on fallow land in the spring are ready to harvest in time for an autumn cane planting. That gives the plant crop optimal growing time in nitrogen rich soil before being harvested the following season. If you've got all the right ingredients you're going to make a good cake and we want to, we want to put peanuts in to give us a good, good five years of cane. Now, we are seeing the results you know, um, time and time again that we are getting really good production out of our sugar cane following the peanut cycle. And it is lasting into more and more returns. So we believe we're getting long longevity in our crop of cane. So if we were getting plant and three returns, we're now getting plant and four or five plus returns. I know we had a crop actually just down from here that we, we had uh, plant and seven returns before I actually ploughed it out. And we're still doing really well. And I really attribute that to peanuts, um, just the, the, what they do for the soil. There is an obvious environmental benefit. More organic nitrogen means less need for granular or liquid fertiliser, reducing the risk that it ends up in the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon. With the legumes here, we're actually reducing our fertiliser input, which is good actually for the reef at the moment. It's very topical that the reef, we've done a lot of work. We're really reducing the amount of nitrogen that we're putting on our crops. And we believe we're still growing as good, if not better crops of cane with reduced nitrogen, so it can be done. It's a similar approach the Russo family is taking to irrigation. Making efficient use of water and electricity is critical. An electrician by trade, Jeremy, keeps a close eye on water use. And it's a big job with two farm dams, 11 high pressure winches, three centre pivots, and connections to the local irrigation scheme. 
Variable speed drives have been installed on pumps to reduce electricity usage and the plan moving forward is to acquire more low pressure overhead irrigation systems that use less electricity and water the crop more efficiently. Getting those low pressure applications in and getting away from the high pressure where your electric motors need to spin as fast as they can if you can drop the speed of your electric motors then you're going to drop the current that you're using so you're eventually going to drop your costs per hour to run those electric motors and things like that and it's all about getting away from those high speed running electric motors to lower speed running motors. With a new generation comes new ideas. Keen to get the message out about what's happening on their farm and share ideas worldwide, the younger Russos are taking on social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter. Probably guess it's just the generation that we're in, I suppose. It's great to share what we're doing on the farm and show we're trying to go forward. Be able to show what it is that we're doing, uh, the benefits that we, we're... You know, people are now asking where their food comes from and we've got the platforms there to show, show exactly what we're doing. We want to be good husbands of the, of the land and we don't want to, I don't want to leave my kids with, with soil degraded more than when I took it on. So, you know, I think there's a misconception. Farmers are there for the long run and I think uh, the idea that farmers degrade their country is a real misnomer because we want it there for our grandkids. You know, that's their future sort of thing. So we're going to do everything we can to look after the land Finding ways to, to do things better is obviously going to be good for everybody.